Oh, hey guys. I didn't see you come in. Whew. How are you guys doing? I was just taking care of some of my, uh, some of my gardening here. We can get to that later. But what I wanted to really talk about was these upcycled, recycled masks that we were making. Let's sit down and take a look at them. So I really wanted to reach out and uh, talk to you guys about this project I came across when I was researching some of the recycled vertical wall gardens that we were doing. And, you know, obviously in the time of, you know, the COVID-19 and PPE being such an important thing for everyone in the country now. Uh, PPP, if you weren't aware of it, is personal protection equipment uh, that's used for any type of health and safety hazard that's uh, readily around us. So, you know, masks are a huge thing right now and they prevent um, people from, you know, transmitting um, the virus back and forth through breathing, through water droplets coming out of their mouth, a, a variety of things. And uh, the masks have come down to be a very important frontline defense for that. Um, so, you know, with all that kind of hype going on around us and coming across this recycled, beautiful working mask, I thought it'd be really interesting to kind of use this as a warm up to develop some of our tool skills and, uh, you know, creative problem solving on how we can use this material, these plastic bottles, which we all have around us uh, to create that vertical wall garden. But this would be a great way just to kind of, you know, practice some of those uh, connection points, practice cutting, um, the tight fit of how this is supposed to, you know, function. I think that's a big part of what I'm interested in is that this thing actually functions. Um, so let's get into it. Let's start. So I just wanted to go over um, everything that you guys would need to build, you know, this type of respirator. And um, I liked it because it was really a lot of materials that we happen to have around our home. Uh, so it's kind of a fun little scavenger hunt mixed with um, some, some hands-on kind of tool, you know, manipulation in order to get this to, to happen. And remember, it looks, it looks pretty nice. It looks a little complicated, but it's actually really simple. So let's kind of take a little focus on the things that we will need um, to build this. And if you take a look at my desk over here, I've got, you know, not that many things. I've got a two liter bottle. Um, I've got a little 20 ounce, um, 16 ounce actually. And um, basically you're gonna need two of these bottles, the smaller bottles that are the same hopefully. On the one I've made, you can see I used uh, Canada Dry 20 ounce bottles. And uh, I just kind of like the symmetry of them. And I believe that ultimately, you know, as you're using it, it has equal pressure because everything's the same on both sides. Uh, so if you had, you know, two sizes like this, it'd be a little different. So we want to keep it uh, symmetrical um, and we want to go ahead and, you know, find our materials that we're going to be using. And along with that is a little tape, you know, any tape that you have around, I think we can kind of work with it. and. Basically, this is the second one I'm building. I use the first one to kind of, you know, understand it myself. And there's a little variability on how these can be built. So it's really kind of open to different materials that each of us happen to have around our home. Um, a stapler, that's going to come in handy. A, uh, if you have rubber gloves right now, keep those. If you don't want to waste them, um, I found these old like dishwashing gloves were pretty good. They're a little thicker than the latex disposable ones. And I also read online that you could use something like recycled bicycle tires. Uh, the tube on the inside, it's really thin and it inflates. That's kind of perfect for these, these one-way valves that we're gonna create here. And, um, you know, just keep an open mind when you're looking around your house. And if some material has, you know, similar properties of some of these materials, you could probably use them. And that's the cool part of this project. Um, is, is figuring out how each of us could kind of make a version of it ourselves and we can test them and play with them and kind of understand um, how these respirators work and how air gets filtered into our lungs from contaminated outside air. Um, you know, I have a drill and a little like 16th inch drill bit. Um, basically, you could do this with a nail. Uh, we're just going to be poking through the plastic um, at one part of the project. So if you don't have a drill and a drill bit, no problem. But this would be a great time to kind of like raid your parents or your grandparents kind of a little toolbox, see their little uh, nuts and bolts drawer that they might have in their, their house. All that little extra odds and ends, those are perfect to be looking at for this project. Uh, we got some duct tape, hot glue gun, always come in handy. Remember, you don't need it. Um, if you don't have this, maybe you have caulking or some type of silicone. Um, 
any type of glue, you know, any of these things will work. So exacto knife, that's an important thing. I got a Sharpie, another exacto knife. So you'll want to take a minute and just kind of collect these things so it's going to be easier so we can sit down and kind of create this thing in one sitting. And uh, don't worry, it's not that labor intensive. I built this first one in about, you know, an hour. Um, so it's a fun little project to work on. And I also added, you know, these cool protective glass shields uh, because part of the personal protective equipment that's needed during this is face shields, eye covering, because, you know, any open area on your head is potentially where the virus is getting in. So I know some of this stuff is kind of funny and silly, but I actually enjoyed making this stuff. Um, and I really enjoyed that, you know, I could connect it to the project we're working on. Um, so let's get started. All right, guys. So the first thing we need to do uh, when we're thinking about starting to make this mask is uh, we need the main kind of mouthpiece that would fit around the front of our face. So, you know, uh, I found a link on YouTube uh, that had this and it was a really nice kind of quick edited video. And I was gonna supply that uh, when I show this video, but I kind of wanted to break some of those steps down. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is mark where we need to cut the bottom of the bottle off. And so basically, just take a marker, we'll hold it on top of, you know, a universal generic, you know, two and a half inch strip of tape. And we just rotate that bottle, that marker touching it, and it's going to scribe a perfect, perfectly level line. Might not be able to see it in the light, but I got a nice little line there. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and cut that using probably my X-Acto knife. All right. This has a little little liquid left in there from me cleaning it. Remember, clean these things before you get started. You don't want to have all that sugar pop water all over your workspace. So clean them, dry them. Now uh, go ahead and enter in that tip. And then basically I kind of slowly roll that two liter bottle while I'm controlling that blade, making sure to get a nice clean cut following the line that I scribed. All right, Some water left in there. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is find my water bottle here. Remember, you're gonna have two of these, two 20 ounce smaller bottles that are matching and symmetrical. So we gotta drink this water. Now we're going to do the same thing to this bottle. Okay, so take that marker one more time. Scribe that there. I think I actually want that to be a little longer. I want to cut on this thing. I'm going to say this should be, you know, about four inches. See how these are a little longer? Yeah, about four inches. So there's actually a line kind of from the manufacturing process. I'm just gonna follow that thing. Enter it in. This bottle's a lot thinner, a lot easier to cut. And I want you to, you know, once you're getting into this, if you like the project, think about how you could make it your own. How can you modify it? How can you improve upon the design? These are all kind of interesting, you know, industrial design, sculptural, um, processes. So we have our uh, first side of our filter and you can see here, you know, this will be here. Now um, I'm going to go ahead and mark a line where I'm going to attach this. And this is a really cool connection. I want you to think about these connections as we enter into our recycled bottle vertical wall garden because uh, I think that's going to be where all the fun of design is on the intricate little connection points of how each one of our systems is put together. And this is just an interesting project that kind of introduces us to like real ways that you can make connections simply um, and creatively. Creatively. Okay, so 
I got it held on there. Kind of zoom in a little bit, cameraman. All right, see it's kind of on one of these triangles of the bottle in the center, all right? Do that same scribe line. Oh, I'm gonna switch out to a different Sharpie. You know how that works. Okay, after multiple attempts at finding a marker that worked, I found one. So I'm holding it in a very awkward way while I'm trying to hold that too. And I'm tracing the area that is touching my contact point. And I wanna to try to trace this as close as possible to this because the secret to this whole respirator project is making nice and tight fittings. So that'll do it. Okay, now a little tip that I was kind of thinking of when I was watching the other video I found is that once we traced this outline on here, make sure to cut on the inside of your line and that'll kind of help ensure that you're getting a nice tight fit. Um, because just that little bit of spacing can make a big difference um, on trying to get a nice connection point. So I've entered the point of the tip in and I am kind of very carefully following my blade to the contour of that little circle there. And remember kids, be careful. If you need to wear gloves during this, go for it. But we have kind of practiced a lot of these skills in the classroom. And I have faith in you guys that you can control the blade accurately to cut a nice little circle out. That wasn't too hard. There's a little circle left over. Doo, 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 doo. Um, okay, and now we're thinking about making that connection. Okay, zoom in, it's important. I wanna see you, I wanna have you see this. So that is, tight enough to where this basically kind of threads in. So it's important when you're choosing a bottle to make sure it has uh, this little remnant from the cap kind of on there. I forget what those are called. Don't know if I never, ever really knew. Um, but now we need to get that off in one piece. So this is where a little pliers come in handy or something small, even the tip of your X-Acto blade. So, Basically, this is a collar that's gonna ensure the tight fit that we have. So this is gonna go all the way in, all the way to that, yeah, that little piece there. And then we're gonna take that piece that we kind of pulled off, make sure we have it on the right way. Slip it down over that, kind of using my fingernail to get it to seat properly, and rotating it. Now, at this point, you know, I think I'd like to improve the original design by adding a little bit of glue to that seam, and that's really gonna ensure a, a nice tight fit. Okay, so for the sake of this video, you know, I'm using any type of glue that I have, and I'm entering it in, come in camera, right between those seams. And I'm gonna kinda add that glue right in there and make that seat. And you're gonna do that on each contact that you have when we put this respirator together. All right, so the next part of this will be to build these one-way valves. All together, this has three one-way valves on them and two of them work as you breathe in on these respirators and one works as you breathe out to get rid of that air that we have. So let's go ahead and figure out how to make those. Mm -hmm. So, with our first two liter bottle that we had, the one we cut the bottom off, we also want to steal this little thing, the, um, the screw on top here. So I have this saw. Um, if you guys have anything that'll kind of work for it, even a uh, bread knife or something, a serrated knife will do the job. I'm gonna go ahead and slice this off right behind that uh, big flange. So I'm being careful, making sure my fingers are not in the path of the saw. You're able to cut off the very tip of that. See how I saved that large flange on the end of that screw on top? Now, if you look closely, there's a little like uh, kerf, no, little debris coming up from that cut. We'll sand that off a little bit. It's no big deal, but we want to make it nice and smooth and see how this still has that little plastic, uh, that white plastic part on it. We're gonna to wanna to go ahead and take that off. So we're gonna grab our pliers one more time. And kind of get in there. Work that off. 
Okay, that thing's off. Now, um, let's go ahead and focus on the one-way valves that we're gonna make. So we've got our bottle cap with our flange on it that we've cut off of our two liter. And uh, this is gonna be the demo for the three valves. They're a little different, but let's go through this. Um, I'm just sanding off some of that material right there from the saw. It's not important, but it'll just be a little nicer. A couple swipes and we're done. So, all right, we gotta work on this flange. And like I said before, we have uh, different types of material that we all have access to. Um, these dishwashing gloves are actually pretty good. Uh, I said the bicycle tire or normal latex gloves. But that'll be the fun of this. I, I wanna see what kind of materials you guys find and are willing to kind of try and use for this. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut out this material and we're gonna go ahead and mark it. And um, I was actually using the bottle cap itself to, to make it, not that it matters at all. Not that it matters at all. So I'll try to get as close as possible. Describe the whole circle around there. You're gonna do this three times. So you could just go ahead and make three of those right now, just like I did for my last mask. And when we go to cut it out, grab our same X-Acto knife right here. And um, just for the sake of keeping it neat, go ahead and cut on the inside of the circle one more time. And we'll create our own little one-way valve latex respirator flap. So I'm just moving it, cutting around, just taking my time. This is why I like art. I like all the little tiny kind of, you know, attention to detail processes. It's kind of therapeutic to me. Just take your time, let the tool do the work, let your hands move the tool around. We have a nice little circle, which fits up pretty well to our little bottle cap that we traced off of. Now we're ready to uh, put air valves, air holes in this, so the one-way valve can function. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our marker again, and if you take a look at you know the valves from this one I made previously, it's got two little screws in there. Now, um, they have washers and nuts on them. They're tiny little guys, like this big. Um, but really, I think you could use a lot of different stuff. You could even use like dowel rods, or if you took a pen and maybe took a piece of pen apart and glued it in there, you could create the same type of thing. It doesn't have to be a, uh, a threaded nut, but I happen to have some of those around, so I'm gonna try that out. But right now, we're gonna make the two holes where these screws are gonna join them. So just basically, I don't wanna put them too, too far to the edge, otherwise it'll bump into the inside wall. I'm just putting them kinda right there. And then at this point, basically you can use your drill or your uh, nail to punch a hole through there. Just be careful not to put a hole through your hand at the same time. All right, got a little drill bit in there. All right, and remember the hole that you drill in there should basically be the same size as whatever material you're putting in there to connect them. So I wanna make sure it's the same size as the screws that I found, that I happen to find. So you'll just kind of customize that to whatever you find around your house. All right, so those are our main connection points. Now we get to actually drill all the holes uh, that our breath, our air will be passing through. Um, so let's go ahead and Take another drill bit, and we're just gonna kinda puncture in a pattern these little holes that will allow our breath to pass. Oh, the battery died, of course. <laughs> All right, so uh, we just drilled through the bottle cap and, you know, like the last time we cut the plastic, there's a little bit of like, you know, fluff on that. Taking that same sandpaper, getting that nice and smooth. It's kind of important because we want our one-way valve flange to seat and seal properly. 
So now that we have our cut out uh, piece of the latex glove, I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down, centered up on that circle right there. Take that handy dandy marker, just kind of hit it, mark it. Now I have uh, right where my spaces should be for my connecting screws. Um, and at the same time, we're gonna go ahead and take the larger part of this plastic bottle and go ahead and cut a little strip of it. And I want you to go ahead and cut a little circle out of that material as well. So take that same bottle cap. We're gonna trace that. All right, now cut that out. So we're cutting that shape out, out of that plastic material there. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing we did with our yellow latex circle, which is place, it's centered over that hole, looking for, there you go. Drop those barks down. We have our piece of plastic with our two marks. Now go ahead and use our X-Acto knives to cut out these little holes and keep them large enough for that screw that's gonna be um, joining all these pieces together. We'll go ahead and just cut that little circle out. All right, so we've got our bottle cap lid, our round piece of latex from our glove, and our round piece of uh, plastic from our excess bottle. So this is for the valve at the bottom. This is the release valve. So this is how we blow the air out. Um, and this is a one-way directional out valve. And this is set up a little differently from the other ones. We're gonna take the latex glove, we're gonna take the kind of the more textured, sticky side, I will say, and go ahead and place that because this is gonna become the air valve when that opens and closes. And so I take our piece of plastic, put that over there. You can see they're all kind of lined up now. See me through it, can you see? Mm -hmm. all right. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our nuts and bolts, our screw, and kind of just Go ahead and place that through. Go ahead and place it through on the other side. So you want to make your holes big enough that you know you're not biting it too much, and you can just kind of run them through. And we want a washer. Probably don't even need a washer actually. Hey, it's so small. It's so small, and my fingers are so big. All right. Okay, now this is important. Come on in close. Come on, guys. All right, see how I, I left a space there? That's important so that rubber flange material can actually move back and forth. And the only reason this plastic here is just to prevent um, this from blowing back too far. Now, this is how this works, if we've done everything correctly. I can test it. See how it blocks the air on the breath in and it only releases. So this valve comes in to contact with the plastic when you breathe in, and it pushes out when you b blow out. So that's our one-way valve outward. Now we have to make the two valves to breathe in, these two valves, which are even simpler than the one we just made. Once again, for the uh, side valves, uh, same process. We draw our, drill our two kind of uh, holes for the screws or the dowel rods, and then we drill our little um, holes where our breath will actually be passing through. We've got our, uh, our little caps for the side valves. And the only difference between this one and the last one we made is that this does not get a piece of plastic on the end because we're only breathing in on this. We don't need that little backer plate. So we just uh, went ahead and made the first of our interior valves. 
Um, you can see how that's kind of set up. It's got the breathing holes. It's got the valve right there. And now once this is in place, we're gonna just screw this in. Make sure it's nice and tight. And you can feel it kind of tighten up on the whole thing. And then, yeah, that's starting to seal up. I can tighten that up a little bit. That looks good. All right, now let's repeat that and do a second one, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and attach, um, after we create the second one, we're gonna bring them both together. And see the angles? See, I have them on uh, two of these kind of triangular bases of the foot of the bottle. Um, and then this bottom one, that's gonna get that first valve that we made, the one way that goes out with the little backer plate on it. And so after you have all that in place, what you're gonna wanna do is conform this to your face. And that's done by doing a relief cut where your nose is gonna fit in. So when I say relief cut, you know, that means that I'm gonna remove material kind of where my nose needs to fit. And this skill, you know, contouring that shape to fit your face and trying to make an airtight seal, you know, that's a really valuable thing to know how to do. Um, that's gonna apply to a lot of different things that you do in life, from as simple to, um, if you're cutting molding to like an irregular shape on a floor and cutting tile, there's relief cuts involved to kind of go around a door jam or something like that. I mean, there's just so many like connections I can make in daily life activity where kind of understanding how to modify these materials are gonna help us all in our life. So basically I thought about the shape of my nose, that triangle right there, the size of it, and I've created, you know, where I'm gonna cut out. And this is different for everyone. So, you know, uh, some of you have smaller noses, some of you have bigger noses. You're gonna have to work back and forth and keep removing material until um, it fits nice and tightly. And we are gonna put this kind of, you know, cushioning uh, liner on it, which is gonna help um, tighten it up even more. But it's really important in this stage that you just take a moment and try to work it um, for a little bit to get it to be as tight as you can make that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out right here. It's my uh, exacto razor. Let's see, I'll just follow. And the thing is you kind of want to incrementally uh, cut this out. You can always make it bigger, but you can't make it smaller. That's a life goal that will always be there. So you just want to kind of work slowly and not try to do it all at one time and keep fitting it and saying, okay, it needs to come out a little bit more. And then, you know, thinking about the shape of my nose, probably needs to do that a little bit more because I have a big nose. And then, um, take a little bit more out. And if you hear that little trampling upstairs, that's my little daughter running around while my sister's watching her. All right, that's starting to feel pretty good, but I'm starting to feel uh, some points right there. So I'm just gonna round those over because I don't want those points sticking in my face when I'm wearing this thing. So I just round that over and once again, think about you know the angle of my face right there. See, that's what I'm talking about. As soon as I got that close to what my face was, you could start to hear the respirator actually fun functioning, the one-way valves working. So creating this in an airtight manner, as tight as you can get it to your face, is really the whole uh, magic behind this design. So let's go ahead and um, finish this out, bring on the other respirator and that bottom one with the, the one-way valve releasing. Hey guys, I, I just realized um, a problem I was having and uh, how to fix the solution on it. So earlier I had told you to go ahead and cut out uh, these holes large enough to just kind of slide those posts through to adhere it. Um, but I wasn't getting the correct uh, seal that I needed because these holes were too large. So what actually works well is if um, where you make your little dots on this piece of rubber, just go ahead and slice through there with your knife and just make a little X. And that way, when you go ahead and place, you can see that as that thing comes through, place that rubber gasket over those threaded rods, you actually get a pretty airtight seal. See how tight that fits um, around that threaded rod? That's really important, uh, that's crucial, because otherwise all the air just kind of escapes through there. 
So um, keep that in mind as you move forward. Um, and likewise, if you guys come up with any tips um, on how to make yours work better, um, let's exchange them with each other because that's what this is all about is improving upon designs and you know working together. And um, it's those little things that allow bigger designs to work, whether that's a vertical uh, garden or it's a respirator like this. You know, it takes a couple tries to get something to function correctly. And that's working now. So you're allowed to breathe out um, and you can't breathe in. And so that represents a well-functioning one-way valve um, that will go on the bottom. And look, it's kind of color-coded. It's like the good air comes in through the green and then the bad air releases through the red. So I think after we get all these together, we got our, our release valve, our intake valves. Um, we need to talk about filters. And so this big cavity is an area where we can put filters um, for the air that we're breathing in. I have um, some like medical grade cotton um, cloth that I found um, and just kind of stuffed it in there. It was in a coil and I just kind of put the whole thing in there. Now, this is an interesting part that, you know, could really go in a lot of different directions. Um, specifically for COVID, um, there's like a specific size that the virus is. And so technically this should all be, you know, scaled to that. Uh, some of the research I was doing um, said that, you know, if you find a vacuum bag, that actually a specific one has uh, a smaller, you know, opening than the virus is. So that like is considered a net 100 mask where it keeps 100% of the, out of the stuff. Um, we're all talking about N95s. That's kind of what that number means. Um, but this is where I invite you to do a little bit more research and really think about the materials that we're putting in here and how air gets filtered. Um, you know, some ideas were charcoal, um, pre-existing other materials, multiple layers of cotton and cloth. It's about like the more layers, um, the more blockage, the more filtering occurs um, for molecules, molecules that pass through there. So, you know, look into that a little bit and think about how materials filter, you know, air and water and how we can kind of use that information. Um, another thing I just want to kind of talk about is that this is a fun project that we're doing together. In no way am I saying that, you know, go ahead and start making these for your family and go out to the grocery stores, because that's not what this is. You might be able to improve this design and actually make it, you know, work pretty well, but it has no real rating. Um, it's all just kind of uh, an element of design and practice. And I really wanted you guys to think about, you know, working with plastic bottles and how we're gonna kind of adapt some of these strategies for the watering gardening system that we're making. So, you know, I still support making these for fun. And, you know, it's really educational in understanding how these valves work, how air is filtered, and how something like this, you know, is saving people's life right now. Um, so I invite you guys to try this. Um, I'm really excited if you guys um, could share any of the processes that you guys are going through and maybe what yours look like in the end. Um, and like I said, you know, it takes a little time to understand this and maybe a, an attempt or two to get it right. But the whole idea of kind of creating these joints with the natural bottles and how they kind of, you know, naturally fit together, not natural bottles, I mean, <laughs> unnatural bottles. Um, and the contouring of the face mask to your face. Those are the skills I want you to develop uh, because as we're entering into our next project, those are gonna come into play. And so I want you guys to go ahead and look around your houses for materials that you could use to kind of create this gasket. I think like duct tape uh, would work. You might like put a little cushioning in there. Maybe that's like a, a little roll of a paper towel or something, just a one or two layers folded over with the duct tape over it. I had some uh, double-sided tape that I used on some foam that I happen to have around. But take a look around and like, you know, weather stripping gaskets, that, that would be a really thing if you happen to, to have some in your garage or something like that. And then the last thing is a, uh, an elastic band. So you're gonna have to uh, adhere that. I use staples 
and a little hot glue to seal up those little holes the staples uh, created. And you just want to kind of form this to the size of your own head and make sure it fits relatively well. Um, remember, this whole key is to make it airtight. So it has to be, you know, cinched down a little bit in order to make that seal happen. That's what needs to occur. All right, so check it out. I've got my protective eyewear. Keep any uh, air droplets out of my face. Got my respirator, you can hear it working. You might be able to zoom in. You can see those valves working. It's pretty cool. So, you know, all this is meant to kind of, you know, enjoy our time at home right now. Think about what's going on in the world. Think about, you know, some of these PPE crises that are going on and how materials around us, um, if used in the right way, um, if enough innovation and creativity went into it, you know, we can solve our own problems. And, you know, this is great uh, practice to think about our next project that we're doing, which leads me back to, you know, where we started out, at the seeds. Um, we are doing the seed and soil drive, and uh, that'll kind of be coming through, hopefully by Friday, you guys will have access to that. I was going to hook it up to the... Um, the school lunches that are still being offered at uh, the high school and there'd be kind of an additional bag of seeds and a bag of soil that you'd be able to pick up and uh, as soon as you guys have that we're going to be rolling out a new video of starting the seeds um, germinating also using like propagating from different root vegetables that you might have in your household um, and so that's going to lay out the next video and uh, until then stay safe and be good uh, till next time jamie payne here Resident artist just at Kushakton High School. Artist.